Hi everyone, I hope 2024 is treating you well. Today, as per the title, I have a quick tutorial for your artworks. Imagine you have regions or realms on your map and you need to outline their borders. Or that you have trading routes that you want to show, so your players or readers can follow along. With this easy brush, you can create multiple variations of it and apply it over and over again. You can even add different routes for each campaign or for each of your books if your characters are traveling elsewhere. It's a nice way of adding extra features and it can be created in minutes. I will show you a few easy designs and a bonus more artsy one, so stay till the end. Just kidding, you can use the chapters below because I really do value your time. Head over to Procreate and we will be working on a 1000 square canvas. Now change your background color. You can do so by clicking on the background layer and choosing black. Head over to the color wheel and choose white. Double click close to it to ensure you snap to it. Now on your drawing layer we will choose select and make sure it's on rectangle. Now put your pencil down and drag to make a rectangle shape. I want mine to be roughly twice as long as it is wide. With that selected you want to drag the color from the color dot to the shape itself. And click selection and press an arrow to move the layer. We will center it on our canvas for that ensure the snapping is on and that when you move the rectangle the orange lines show up. This means it's bang on in the middle. Now we're going to copy the layer from its menu and use it to create a new brush. We're going to use one of Procreate's existing brushes to help us with settings. For this, I'm using Drip in the Spray Paint menu. Simply slide to the left and click on the duplicate, then click on the new copy to access the brush settings. In the shape settings, we will click on Edit and Import, then paste the copied layer in here. Once you see the square imported, click Done. Now we have a rectangle brush, but when you try to use it, it doesn't behave the way we want it. We adjust the rotation to the max so it follows the stroke, like so. Let me clear the drawing pad so you can see better. Now the path is following the stroke of our pencil, but the rectangles are way too close to each other and way too big. To adjust that, we're going to go to properties and adjust the size first. Slide down to the desired maximum size, I change it to 100%, but you can change it later if you want. Now in the stroke path menu, we can adjust spacing and I will change mine to around 75%. Once you're happy with the result, the last thing is to test your brush on a new layer of your artwork. Create a new layer and choose your newly created brush. Adjust the size on the slider and test it. If it looks like this, then you might want to go back to the settings and switch in the properties orient to screen. It will solve the issue for you. If you want to adjust the spacing again, just go into the brush settings and adjust it in the stroke path. You can also add stabilization, but in my opinion, it doesn't change the brush that much and it's not really needed. Another thing to remember is that the first rectangle might come up wonky. This is because the follow stroke setting doesn't yet know which way your pencil is going to go. Once you start the drawing, the rest of the rectangles will fall in line. I'd suggest you start drawing the line a little earlier and erase the first rectangle once you're happy with the rest. Okay, so that's a nice borderline that we can use to show different realms, constraints or a path. Now, if we want to show both the border and the trading route, for example, we wouldn't use the same line work, would we? That would be confusing. So here is another option you can use. Yep, it's a novel, just like that. You copy the brush we just made and apply that shape to the duplicate. Change settings to your liking and you can now apply both lines to the same map. You can change the color to ensure an even bigger contrast between the two. Oh, you need a third one? Here's an idea. Yep, it's a square. Just tilt it. You see where I'm going with it, right? You can use any shape with this. You can even do stars if you want to, although that might be a bit too much. 
but it gives you an idea of how you can differentiate the lines in your art without confusing the public. Now to the bonus one as promised. Just don't laugh because they sure look wonky, but I just sketched them very, very quickly to show you that an easy icon can be used in a similar way. You want to show someone traveled on foot? Great, no better way than using a wonky footpath on your map. Or if you're doing a D&D campaign and use a digital map for it, you can use it to save your progress and know exactly where you finished once you pick it up again. It can be replaced by a horseshoe icon, paw print, shoe print, anything you like. Same principles apply, just copy your pictures, adjust the spacing and sizing if need be, and you're good to go. It's just another way to enrich your work that you create once and reuse over and over again. This is it for today. Thank you as always for your support. Let me know down in the comments if this helps you or if you have any requests or questions. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.